Welcome back to the Astroform channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video we're going to discuss whether or not it is worthwhile to buy this Celestron 0.7 reducer lens for your Edge HD telescope. So without further ado, let's get into the video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Wido Oerlemans and I'm an amateur astrophotographer living in Utrecht, the Netherlands, where I perform my astrophotography from my balcony in the city. If you like content on astrophotography, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen. Highly appreciate it. And let's continue with the video. So hi folks, if you have been following me on my channel, you probably know that I recently bought a new telescope. It's this Celestron Edge HD telescope. <laughs> and with this telescope, I recently been able to capture the trapezium. This is an open star cluster at the very heart of the Orion Nebula. So that was pretty awesome to do. At the same time, I have two particular problems when using this telescope. So the first problem is that when I want to capture objects like the moon, or the Triangulum Galaxy M33, this Edge HD is actually zoomed in so much that I cannot capture the entire object within a single photo. And the second issue is that yeah, at f10, uh, this telescope is rather slow in collecting the faint light coming from deep space as compared to other telescopes that are on the astrophotography market today. So in this video, I just want to show you that the Celestron 0.7 reducer can actually fix some of these issues. And I also want to show you how to set up your Celestron 0.7 reducer with this Edge HD telescope. So the first main reason to buy this 0.7 reducer is that it will widen your field of view by reducing the focal length of your Edge HD telescope. And let me give you a specific example that is easy to understand. So let's consider that you have a DSLR camera and this DSLR camera comes with a kit lens ranging from 18 to about 50 millimeters. Of course, when you zoom in to about 50 millimeters, you will get a much more zoomed in, narrower field of view as compared to when you zoom out to 18 millimeters. Well, the same goes for your Celestron Edge HD. The Edge HD has a native focal length of 2032 millimeters. And when you use it in combination with this reducer, you will get down to 1422 millimeters of focal length. You can simply take the native focal length, the 2032 millimeters, and multiply that by 0.7, and that will get you to 1422 millimeters of focal length. And this actually compares to getting a wider field of view, actually about 43% wider as compared to using your Edge HD for astrophotography at its native focal length. I am in astronomy tools for this. Um, in the field of view calculator, I will switch to imaging mode. I think this tool is very useful. Um, let's select the moon as an object we want to image. And of course, we're going to use the Edge HD. In my case, I have an eight inch Edge HD with a focal length of 2032 millimeters. Um, for a camera, I am often using my ASI 1600 Mono Pro. So I will select that camera with this particular resolution and pixel size. Of course, you might have a different camera. So then you can either manually adjust the resolution and pixel size here, or you can use this drop down list and type in the name of your camera. Uh, Astronomy Tools has the information, the resolution, the pixel size information of a lot of cameras already. Um, and then you can here select a reducer. So let's add a field of view that does not include the reducer and let's add a field of view here at to view uh, that has the reducer incorporated. So let's look at this picture of the moon and you can see here in red we have uh, the Celestron Edge HD in combination with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro without using the reducer and then you can see that the uh, field of view is just a little bit too narrow to fit the entire moon within this particular field of view. But when I will be using the reducer, the 0.7 reducer, I will be able to fit the moon in just one photo, in one picture. So that's pretty nice. Question of the day. Are you using a reducer or are you considering to buy a reducer for your astrophotography? Please share your thoughts and experiences in the comment section down below so we can start a conversation on reducers. 
thanks. So a second reason to consider buying a reducer is actually that it allows for a little bit more error in your tracking. And let me explain that a little bit. So in astrophotography, of course, we want to track objects in the night sky as accurately as possible because we're going to take multi-minute pictures of those objects. And when you are zoomed in more on such an object, of course, the slightest error in tracking that object, it will result in fatal falls in your picture. So with fatal falls, I mean getting a blurry picture of the deep sky object you were interested in imaging or getting elongated stars in your picture and so on. Um, so when you're zoomed out a little bit more, it just allows your mount to make a little bit more periodic errors as they are called before those errors will show up in your picture. So a third reason to consider buying this particular 0.7 reducer for your Edge HD is that it will make your telescope one full stop faster. So what does this actually mean? Well, photographically, it means that you are able to collect the same amount of light when you're tracking an object in the night sky in about half the time as compared to using your Edge HD without the reducer at its native focal length. When you use this reducer, your F ratio gets down to F10 times multiplied by 0.7. Uh, so you will end up with an F7 telescope. And actually this means that when you are tracking an object in the night sky, for instance, for three minutes at native focal length, you will collect the same amount of light with your reducer for about one and a half minutes. So it greatly reduces the exposure time you will need to capture light coming from deep space objects in the night sky. Being Dutch, I'm always looking for cheap or cheaper alternatives or more affordable solutions. And you might notice that there are a lot of F6.3 reducers for Smith Cassegrain telescopes on the market today that are a lot more affordable in price as compared to this one. This is a dedicated 0.7 reducer you can use in combination with your Edge HD telescope. And you might be tempted to buy the cheaper F6.3 reducer because they are made for Smith Cassegrain Cass uh, telescopes and your Edge HD is also a Smith Cassegrain telescope, right? Well, in this case, wrong because Classical Smith Cassegrain telescopes, they suffer from what is called field curvature. And these F6.3 reducers, a lot of them, they also correct for that field curvature. So it works on a Smith Cassegrain telescope, but it will not work on your Edge HD because your Edge HD is already a high quality optics telescope and the internal system already corrects for that kind of field curvature. So if you pair an F6.3 reducer with your Edge HD, you will actually introduce field curvature in your field of view. And this will lead to, for instance, elongated stars uh, towards the edges of your field of view. So please refrain from buying this cheaper F6.3 reducer alternative and stick with the Edge HD 0.7 reducer is my opinion and let's go outside so I can show you how to set up this reducer. So as you can read in the instructions this particular reducer needs a back focus of 105 millimeters so in order to achieve that uh, we first are going to remove the original uh, adapter that comes with the Edge HD telescope. This is a very simple thing to do you just screw off the original adapter like I do here um, and you will replace that adapter with the 0.7 reducer. So after unscrewing that adapter, you just take your 0.7 reducer. Uh, you have to remove the protection plates first that come with that uh, focal reducer. And after removing those protection plates, you can simply screw that 0.7 reducer onto your Edge HD telescope, like I demonstrate here. So the next important thing to do is to achieve the correct back focus of 105 millimeters. And I would always advise you to consult an astrophotography shop uh, to see what kind of extension rings you need. So in this case, you can see that I'm using a Smith Cassegrain to T2 adapter. Uh, I'm screwing that on the reducer and I have five additional extension rings. These are M48 to T2. Uh, extension rings actually that brings my back focus to 78.5 millimeters 
Um, and then after that, I'm also attaching my electronic filter wheel. This is a ZWO electronic filter wheel uh, and my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera to the imaging train, as you can see here. Um, and that adds another 26.5 millimeters to my back focus. So in total, I then have achieved a back focus of 105 millimeters. And the final thing to do is also to attach the ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera. It comes with an adapter, but you can see here that, yeah, you can simply screw all that adapter um, from the ASI 1600 Mono Pro, after which you can directly connect the ASI 1600 Mono Pro to the filter wheel. And again, that will bring my back focus to 105 millimeters. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. Until then, I want to wish you clear skies. Bye bye.